Recently I've been finding it extremely difficult to separate the art from the artist. Anytime I see anything Harry Potter related, the thought of the horribly transphobic things JK Rowling has said slithers into my brain and gets arranged by a talking hat on my head. I can't get it off. Please help me. Every time I meander over to the fridge to look for food, a pickle catches my eye. Wait, what was I talking about? The controversial history of Justin Roiland is all I can think about. And whenever I'm enjoying the Spotify playlist, Top Hits of 2004, which is my favorite playlist, <laughs> Through the Wire by Kanye West forcefully blasts into my eardrums, making me wonder if you know what that means. Waffling aside, the topic of separating art from the artist is a phenomenon that millions of people have been affected by. If you still don't fully understand what my dumbass is talking about, which is okay, because I don't either. Separating art from the artist is a debate that has become more and more popular over the recent coming years as more and more celebrities have been exposed for doing some pretty horrible things. What are those horrible things? I hear you asking, well, sweet little Nathaniel, I cannot say those things on YouTube unless I want my channel to be covered by an invisibility cloak. But to really describe it, you have to first look at the art. In this case, the art is the medium that the artist has made. A video game, a movie, a book, a TV show, an album, or a beef and cheese burrito, that is the art. Let's do an example of Michael Jackson and his classic album, Thriller. This album is a complete classic with the triple threat of Thriller, Beat It and Billie Jean literally one after the other. Oh yeah, and don't forget every cancelled YouTuber's favourite, PYT aka Pretty Young Thing. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad joke. I sure hope the chords for that song were in G minor. Moving on. This album is a classic and if you have no idea who Michael Jackson is then please click off this video right now. I'm sorry for your loss. But Michael has done some pretty controversial things in his time, so I completely understand if you can't listen to the song Baby Be Mine without reminding you of a certain <coughs> thing. Then there's the artist, the person of prominence who has made some pretty bad decisions in their time. But in this scenario... Uh... What? The artist's work has been like attached to the artist themselves. So, you know, anything that they've made has their name infused with it as well as their home address with someone like jake paul which is someone that i can't believe i'm still talking about in 2023 jake's art is something that no one other than ipad looking picking nose booger kids have actually enjoyed especially whatever he was making in 2017 oh my god he was making some pretty weird stuff in 2017 what are those? <laughs> I guess he didn't like my shoes. So that's the case where the artist and their art are both controversial, leading to a big pile of steamy invisible shit. Now, there are so many ways to look at this question and it's completely up to you to decide whether you want to separate the art from the artist. But it's such a horrible feeling when someone from your childhood or an artist that you recently found and love gets put on the news. Because when is there good news on the news? Never. The answer is never. There's so many different examples that I could dive headfirst into and swim around for about 15 to 25 minutes but i want to talk about the ones that i put in the thumbnail because i put them yeah because i put them in the thumbnail the first one of those wacky doodads is jk rowling the creator of harry potter and writer of all the books i think because i haven't read one oh, okay, okay okay i know i haven't read them jeez oh my god okay, okay guys just settle down he's at least seen the movies right no! Ah! Yeah, that's not a joke. I really haven't watched the Harry Potter movies or even read the books, okay? I don't even know what Hogwarts house I'm in, okay? Oh. That... Cool. Anyway, even though she had nothing to do with the movies, the name J.K. Rowling is heavily associated with the Harry Potter series. And from a quick Google search, J.K. Rowling has made over 700 million from the Harry Potter films alone. Oh lord. So when back in June of 2020, which was Pride Month, J.K. Rowling tweeted some pretty nasty things. The Harry Potter fans, as well as the whole internet, were not happy. She lost all of her support, everyone that was a fan of Harry Potter turned against her, and she lost everything that she worked for, the legacy of the creator of Harry Potter, in just one tweet. Like, dude, why did she do that? 
Why did she open her mouth and spray Hogwarts everywhere? So this is where the argument comes back in. And this is where it's really hard to know if you should separate art from the artist. For JK Rowling, she's already like a billionaire. She's got that beast money. So deciding like not to buy the books or not to watch the movies anymore isn't going to do much to, you know, hurt her bank account or hurt her in any sort of way financially. And, you know, if you are a big enough Harry Potter fan, which a lot of people are, they're not just going to completely cold turkey Harry Potter and stop everything altogether. It's like if every time a Harry Potter fan meets someone called Harry, they punch them in the face and itch a scar into their forehead in a glorious bastard style. So is there really a way to watch Harry Potter and completely forget about all the shitty things that JK Rowling has done? I think yes. Does that sentence make any sense? It's a controversial question, but I will reveal my opinion and take at the end of the video. Because first we gotta talk about Justin Roiland. Uh, Along with his other less controversial buddy, Dan Harmon, these two buddies, these two pals and chums, they are pals and chums and buddies, are the creators of the hit animated sitcom Rick and Morty. But you probably already knew that. This isn't news to you, is it? Well, if it is, this might come as a huge shock to you that Justin Roiland has done some pretty nasty things. Trigger warning for abuse, but um, at the beginning of 2023, Justin was charged with two cases of domestic abuse, which tore a gaping black hole in Rick's portal gun and sending Sichuan sauce thrusting across the fan. This news was everywhere since Rick and Morty was such an incredibly popular show. Um, there was no way that you could avoid this news. It was literally everywhere. Even though personally I'm not a fan of Rick and Morty, I know this news was horrible to a lot of people that did watch the show and was such a heartbreaking moment for everyone that was just even a fan of a single episode. This news was bad and before the results from the trial had even gone through, through, Adult Swim officially cut ties with Justin Broiler. Justin had lost everything he worked on in the span of multiple days. All his fans turned their backs on him. He had lost the most popular thing he's ever worked on and more people were starting to come out with more allegations and DMs, oh my god, to minors. Why does everyone famous have to be messaging children? After a lack of evidence, the charges were dismissed and the Big J denied any form of abuse, but this pickle had been sitting for too long and Justin Roiland's career as we know it is done. Now how does this relate to separating the art from the artist? Well I just explained that you imbecile. But Justin's voice is littered throughout the entire show. He plays the two main characters, he plays a bunch of background characters and of course Mr. Poopy oh, Butthole. Wait. Mr. Poopy Butthole? Okay, I think I need to watch Rick and Morty now. It is extremely hard to watch Rick and Morty without getting the reminder of Justin Roiland, which I think is why it's such a challenge to separate the art from the artist. Despite Justin's now staying on the show, Rick and Morty is an incredibly successful and critically acclaimed show if those words mean anything to you. It is really depressing when the artist of said art has made something that millions and billions of people have loved all across the world, and all they had to do was to keep up that legacy and keep up their stability on that show was not be weird. But I think I can only take one more before my skin turns into a toxic green sludge. So let me give someone a call. Okay. Hello? Hello, Mr. West. Wake up, Mr. West. Kanye West was the name of the legendary rapper who rose to fame in 2004 with his undeniable classic, The College Dropout. I really don't need to give his whole backstory, but after making an amazing trilogy of albums, with the third one of those being the one and only Graduation, Kanye West became a superstar. And then he ruined it all with a few tweets. I'm joking. <laughs> he also did some other horrible stuff too. But yeah, dude, I held off from talking about it for this long because it's such a really hard topic and so difficult to talk about, especially when you're all staring at me. Like, can you stop staring at me? It's making me uncomfortable. Kanye, now known as Ye, has made a bunch of bad decisions throughout his career, which makes listening to his music something that is extremely hard to do. He's especially made some pretty bad decisions that have led to certain people, you know, doing certain things around his name and everything like that. Yeah, so he's made some bad decisions. If we separate Kanye West from his music, he's made some really great songs, some fantastic albums, and 
made amazing pieces of music that are masterpieces in their own right. His art is well loved by billions of people, but as the things that Kanye West said began to become more and more horrible, it became harder and harder to enjoy listening to his music. Well, not for some fans who say stuff like, Okay, fine. He hates the Jews. But he made graduation, so and what I am I supposed down. to believe? There's no point hiding the fact that I love Kanye's music. His first three albums are incredible. His work on Common's album just shows how talented of a producer he is. And Through the Wire is literally one of my favorite songs of all time. He's made some amazing art, but when the whole anti-Semitism thing came out in October 2020, I completely stopped listening to Kanye's music. Like, dude, I would be scrolling through my like songs in here and I wonder and throw my phone full speed across my room. It's really hard to know if listening to Kanye's music is okay when there's so many horrible things that he said leading to so much pain for so many groups of people. The reason that I wanted to make this video in the first place was because of listening to a rap group that have become my favorite of the year. And that's A Tribe Called Quest. Dude, I absolutely love this group right now. I love everything they've made and I thought they were just a nice group of squeaky clean lads. Until I heard this. One song on what's considered by many, including me, as one of the best rap albums ever made, The Low End Theory. This album is seriously a classic, but one song on there called Show Business, uh, a great song by the way, digging in and like dissing on the music industry was originally a whole lot darker. So the song was called Georgie Porgy and has what's considered by many as the most homophobic rap lyrics of all time. This track was apparently so bad that the record label said that there was no way that this was going on their album, which luckily completely saved A Tribe Called Quest legacy. So thank God, dude, that this track was never released. Um, it would have literally ruined a tribe called Quest. The lyrics and a crappy quality version are still out there, but I am so damn grateful that this never made it on the album. Of course it was made in a different time, but even back then it was still recognized as bad enough to not make it onto the album. The song made it hard for me to separate art from the artist, but I do believe that people change and grow. And after, you know, since Quest has been gone and they've broken up for a long time now, there's no public statements about this song. But one lyric from the leader of the Quest, Q-Tip, um, although does look bad out of context, shows from the perspective of Donald Trump that it's clear that Tribe have changed their ways. But yeah, when I found this out, dude, it was such a twist to my balls. Ew, I, I'm sorry, that, that was really nasty. Because I had just found something that I absolutely loved and for it to be just ripped away from me in one measly second made me wonder okay that was the last time i swear <laughs> like dude i had a match in one hand and my vinyl in the other so that brings it finally to what i think about this whole kerfuffle do i think we should separate art from the artist oh my god he's about to say it oh my god no way no come on okay fine i think we should the reason that i think we should is because it shouldn't still be bad to read harry potter watch rick and morty or listen to a trap called quest or kanye west uh straight bars because because good art will always be good art, no matter what pile of dirt and bones ended up creating it. So, uh, is anyone else getting a little hungry? Bye.